what's going on everyone so let's do a little quick intraday recap on the nasdaq right so what we're looking at here is the futures hell of an absolute recovery from yesterday's selling pressure here so if we just kind of go back and we look at yesterday's price action look at the short down below the the linear regression channel here you can see 7 a.m pacific standard time we took a big blow here followed by a slight dead cat bounce right but the short level yesterday was going to be below that 15761 area you can see that we took that out at 10 a.m pacific standard time all the way down here to the 200 and then got confirmation which actually just completely like just imploded right so if we look at the recovery that we had starting um you know after the market closed yesterday going into the overnight session here once we really got back over this 200 day moving average again we're looking at the one hour time frame here i love using the one hour time frame for intraday hard levels okay so what that means is that for intraday I want to see these hard levels kind of act as good supports and good resistance levels so it can you know kind of persuade me on my directional bias of what I should be trading on an intra on a intraday scalping type of level when I'm playing the like the five minute chart okay so once we cleared out this this 200 day moving average here that came out of, you know, in the pre-market at 4 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, okay? So in the overnight session, in the pre-market session, we get back over this 200-day moving average here, and we've gone up higher the last four hours. Now, what we're doing is attempting to retest yesterday's highs here in this zone. Coming into the New York lunch hour here, I would definitely be cautious if you're looking to barely start going long here on a position, you got to start to second-guess yourself. Your real entry on the breakout was last hour at 7 a.m and that entry pivot was around 15837 once we got over that we had a ton of room to kind of go up we're up 50 points from that because you can see that's confirming getting into this top channel now if you look at the upper channel here we're sitting at around 16,000. okay so i if the market stays at, at the top of this range we could definitely look for next week this to continue into the 16,000 area which is still about 250 points 220 points away again does not mean that we're going to pull back okay doesn't mean that we're not going to come back down to test 1583s but what i'm saying is that we could continue to push higher here if we don't have a harsh sell-off at the end of the day now again your guess is just as good as my guess all i can do is look at the charts and react to the price action what i'm seeing here is yesterday's highs should act as a little bit of resistance, right? At least some type of resistance, okay? So if I just kind of draw these X's across here, this whole zone here, again, because nothing is concrete down to the penny, but this whole zone here could act as a level of resistance. So we could see it test this zone and kind of come back down a little bit and then consolidate. But if we do close in this upper portion up here, then definitely, I would look for Monday and next week, right? To have a little bit of a pullback and then boom, an explosion through today's highs, through Thursday's highs, and then play that into the 16K mark, okay? That's what I would be looking for on the futures. So if you are a scalper, right? You're not gonna catch the whole 200 point move, but your directional bias should be looking to scalp to the long side here um if we can bust through that next week now again if you're sitting at the computer screens right now and you're looking to take a trade and you're trying to find something and you're looking at everyone else and you're you, everyone else is making money and you're wondering why you haven't made any money yet again i'm not saying that this does not continue today to the upside but what i am saying is just be cautious okay so you know if you play futures and you play five cons maybe play two if you play you know, 10 cons, maybe play five. If you play two cons, maybe just play one. And if you're only playing one at a time, you know, maybe just give it a, a day to kind of consolidate, a day to rest, right? You know, I don't really want to be jumping out of the 10th floor up here, you know, because the pullback is going to be steep. I would rather be jumping out of the first floor here where my my risk is, is a lot smaller than coming all the way down from the top. I hope that makes sense here. Again, we're going to have to keep a close eye here on what's going on. You know, for all of you guys that have been following me and you guys kind of know this, my scalping strategy, you know, if we kind of look at the, you know, the 20 plays, look at the 20 play that came at 6.20 a.m. in the morning. Essentially, this was a long off the bell, okay? So market's going to open here. This was essentially a long, you know, over the, you know, 15, 7, 60s, and it's, it's just been a hold all day long. Um, 
you know, it's up 140, 150 points at the at this moment in time being. You can see we had a little bit of consolidation here between the hours of, you know, seven and around eight, right? A little bit of consolidation up and down, up and down, pitter patter. And then we came into this 20 and the 20 caught us and boom, absolutely exploded. So one way you could have looked at this is take the low wicks from the consolidation, use this as a hard stop, 15, 7, 8, 80s, and then look for a breakout over the 15, 8, 3, 8. You know, th those were, that was the zone, right? So like if, if you're looking at a zone here, you know, this would be your your uh, demand zone here, and this is your supply zone, right? So you would be looking at this box. Again, this is also, you know, goes back to, you know, old school trading strategies, you know, the Dar Darwin, what is it, the Darwin um, strategy or some shit like that, where he essentially, you know, it, it, you're looking for the, you're looking for a run up and then you're looking for a box, right? And then once you get this box, you're playing the breakout of the box to either side. Um, again, you know, all of these concepts, all these strategies, they've been around for, you know, years and years and years and years and years. Um, what I am saying is that, you know, a lot of these concepts are repackaged. A lot of these strategies are repackaged. You know, it's basically price action and momentum. Um, and it's reading it's reading the candlesticks is what it is. It's, you know, it's having a level of, of comfort, you know, that where you can manage your risk, where you're not going to be emotional. And then it's pushing your chips to the middle of the table like a poker player and living and dying by that decision, okay? So what that means is that if you're gonna play this breakout, you're gonna play the breakout and you're gonna size yourself correctly to withstand, right? To withstand a breakdown, okay? So if we're gonna play the breakout to the top side, well, as soon as we start to break out of this zone here, we need to be long and we need to either, you know, be using the five as a trailing stop, the 10 moving average as a trailing stop, the 20 or the whole bottom of the demand zone. The choice is yours. Every trader is gonna want the exact same stop loss you're going to want to know where to take profits at guess what guys stock market goes up and down nothing goes straight up nothing goes straight down things are going to you know bend and twist around these moving averages and around these supply and demand zones they might you know hold for a little bit and then break down they might you know you know not even retest or, or you know and just continue to just to, to shoot up like a rocket so again you know hell of a move today i hope all of you guys have managed to make some money today um, if you didn't, it's okay, right? It's okay. The market's not going anywhere. The market's going to be open next week. It's going to be open the weekend after, the week after that, the week after that, the month after that, and so forth and so forth, right? We, you know, don't feel down because you missed the move today. You're going to get another one, right? Just it, the game, it's a game of probabilities. Let's keep staying in the game. As long as we didn't blow up our accounts today, we're fine. And if you feel like you're on the verge of blowing up your accounts because you can't get anything going, the best advice from, uh, from me to you is turn off the computer screens go outside take a walk get some sun go to the gym do something and understand that there will always be another setup this is not the end this is not the last chance you have to make money there's no rush why are we rushing the process as traders to get to this imaginary finish line when we have all the time in the world as long as we are here able to breathe walk read candlesticks click the mouse talk, do all of this stuff. As long as we are here, we will be able to make money. Let's slow down the process. Let's take our time. Let's look at the strategies that we're using. Let's look at the risk management that we're using. Let's build out a trading plan. Let's journal our trades as far as entries and exits, as well as the emotions that we feel when we're in there. And let's start getting better one day at a time. I hope this video helps you guys. Again, I'll see you guys all next week.